Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Sending a message is very important. It is important for proper communication. It is important to make things run smoothly. It is very important to prevent mistakes and to allow accuracy in any system. Our bodies rely on the nervous system to send proper messages to different parts of the body. The nervous system is a complex system that coordinates the actions of the body and allows it to react to stimuli. It's very important for us to note that the nervous system relies on two things. It relies on the messages which are called impulses and impulses they are electrical messages. Neurons Neurons are also called nerve cells or nerve fiber. They are responsible to transmit impulses around the body. Now, the nervous system, there are two types of nervous systems in our body or two parts of the nervous system. One is called the CNS, which is known as the central nervous system. And we also have the PNS, which is the peripheral nervous system. The CNS is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. The nerves that are attached to the brain, they are called the cranial nerves and those nerves that are attached to the spinal cord, those are called spinal nerves. The, all the other nerves are connected to the PNS and those nerves are called peripheral nerves. So there are three main nerves, cranial attached to the brain, spinal nerves attached to the spinal cord, and peripheral, nerve, peripheral nerves, they attach to the PNS. Now let's take a look at the brain. Now the brain is like the control center of the nervous system. There are three major parts we're going to look at. And so let's look at the largest part, which is called the cerebrum. And the cerebrum controls voluntary actions, those actions that you decide to do. The cerebellum, it controls balance and coordination. So it helps you to walk straight, properly, and not falling down that easily. So if you take in alcoholic beverages, it can affect your cerebellum and allow you to lose balance and coordination. We also have the medulla oblongata, which is also called the brain stem. It controls involuntary actions, those actions that are controlled automatically by the body. And attached to the brain, we have the spinal cord. And the spinal cord is considered to be the portal of transmission between the body and the brain. It is responsible for reflex actions. Right, let's look at the types of responses. And we have three major types. We have the voluntary actions, we have the involuntary actions, and reflex actions. Now a description of these. So voluntary actions, those are consciously controlled by the individual by using the skeletal muscles. So if you're going to walk, run, and so on. You'll see some examples shortly. The involuntary actions, we call those the automatic responses without any conscious thoughts. We have reflex actions and those are immediate responses without the use of the brain. No brain involvement whatsoever. Now let's look at the parts that are involved in these responses and also some examples. So voluntary actions, they are controlled by both by both the brain and the spinal cord and examples of that will be running, walking, talking, anything that you decide to do. Even certain emotion because if you see something you could decide to laugh or you may even want to cry. Involuntary actions are also controlled by the brain and spinal cord. An example of that will be heartbeat, it will also be a digestion of food and any system that is going on in the body that you really do not control. Most of them are controlled by smooth muscles. And we have reflex action 
and is controlled by the spinal cord. No brain involvement in this one. And an example of that is pulling your fingers from a hot metal or something that is really hot. Or if you get a sharp pain by a stick of something, you may respond to that immediately without thinking. Now, parts of a neuron that you should note is we have what they call dendrites and the dendrites easy way to identify those those are the most branchy looking part of the neuron and we have what they call a cell body so you'll notice it looks like a cell with a nucleus and then we have an entire portion right here which we can describe as the oxen but let's be specific with a few parts now we have the covering which is called the myelin sheath and then the innermost portion is actually the axon. But the entire thing, if it's labeled like this, you can identify it as the axon. At the end of the axon, we have what are called nerve endings or axon terminal. So think about the ending being terminated, so axon terminal. These structures that are covering the Axon, those are called the swan cell. All right, and we're going to be clear and exactly where is the swan cell and the myelin sheet because those two sometimes they can be confusion between them. So let's look at that. But before I go, um, this arrow is indicating the direction or the flow of impulse. And a point to note is that impulses always travel from the dendrites towards the axon so it always coming from where the dendrites are going towards the axon and finishes at the axon terminal so the easy way to remember it starts from the dendrites now a swan cell which is the covering of the axon so if you notice then let's go back to one so one of these lighter beige portion is the swan cell and so the innermost part of the swan cell you'll find the axon and you'll see a nucleus of the swan cell because the cells will have nucleus. However, the swan cell is what is responsible to make the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath are those layers that cover the axon. And the myelin sheath is very important to allow impulses to travel faster because the myelin sheath insulates the axon. So it provides insulation. So if you think about this like a piece of wire and the metal portion in the middle, which is the accent, that's actually electricity run through that. And the myelin sheet will be like the, plast the plastic or the rubber covering that insulate the metallic wire. So it's just the same thing in your body because impulses, remember impulses are electrical in nature and they need to be insulated. Okay, otherwise the charges will be dissipated all over the body which you do not need it can cause other problems now the three types of neurons that we supposed to know we have one that's called sensory you have a relay neuron otherwise called the interneuron and the motor neuron the difference between these neuron is the position of the cell body so the first one we'll look at is a sensory neuron and the way to identify that the cell body is at the side. So think about sensory S, the side. Cell body is at the side. And for the relay neuron or the interneuron, think about the word interneuron. So it's in between. Or if you run a relay, you pass on the button from one person to the other person. So the cell body is in the middle or in between the dendrites and the nerve endings so notice it's in between the neuron and for the motor neuron the cell body is at the end so we say side middle or in between that's why the word inter and at the end for motor okay so use the cell body to identify the types of neuron now, you also it's also very important for you to know the direction of flow of impulse. And f wherever in the body it is, there is the impulse will travel from the receptor cells. And the, receptors, the receptor cells are generally found in sense organs. 
So for example, receptor cells in the eyes, um, they will respond to light. Receptor cells in your nose, the olfactory glands, they will respond to chemical smell. The tongue will respond to chemical taste. The air responsible to vibrate respond to vibration or sound. And your skin will respond to touch, pain, pressure, change of temperature. And so these receptor cells, they receive the impulse. And then it'll trigger the response and it'll travel through the sensory neuron. Notice the cell body is on the side. And then it moves on to the relay neuron. And then it moves on to the motor neuron and go into the muscle where you find effector cell. And these effector cells will trigger the response in the muscle. Very important for us to note also is that between two nerve cells, you will find what you call a snap. So anywhere a nerve end, you will find a snap. So it could be between the receptor cell and also the sensory neuron. It could be also between the effector cell and the motor neuron. So anywhere between two cells or organ or muscle, you will find a snap. Now, a reflex arc will also show you the direction of the flow of impulse. And it's similar to what I've just showed you. The difference is now we put in a spinal cord. But the point I want to make right here is that all three neurons meet within the spinal cord. So notice it, a part of the sensory is in the spinal cord, all of the relays in the spinal cord, and a part of the motor neuron is in the spinal cord. Where they meet in the, sp in the spinal cord is called the gray matter. So the gray matter of the spinal cord is in the middle. The middle portion is the gray matter. And on the outermost part is called the white matter. So the gray matter is where you find bloods, blood capillaries and nerves. Now a synapse, I want to zoom into a snap and look exactly what a synapse look like. So a synapse looks like this. And first, I want to point out that the direction of a flow of impulse, it comes from one, new, um, one nerve to another nerve. But it's very important for you to note is that the nerve that is carrying the impulse to the other nerve, it is the nerve endings. Because remember the statement is that dendrites receive impulse. So whatever receiving the impulse must be a dendrite or the end of a dendrite and it must come from another nerve ending. So first I wanted to note is that the snap is a space between the two nerves. And so, if you think about it, we have what we call the presynaptic cell, which is the one that comes before the synapse, which is coming before the space. And then we have the postsynaptic cell, which is the one that comes after the synapse. And so the nerve endings will be the part of the nerves that will have the presynaptic cell. And the dendrites, those will have the postsynaptic cells. Now, I want to make something clear is that this space is also called a synaptic cleft. That is the area of the space between the two nerves, or what you can say, the presynaptic cell and the postsynaptic cell. Now, very important for us to understand how this works. Remember, impulses are electrical in nature. However, neurotransmitters are chemical in nature. So, have th so th these are chemical. The neurotransmitters are chemical substances. Normally, they are free radicals or ions. Now, how this works is that an electrical signal will, triggers, will trigger these chemicals to send a message across the nerves. So the chemicals will move through what are called vesicles. So these blue spots are vesicles. And on the opposing side, or in the dendrites, these will call receptors. So these will receive the neurotransmitter, and the message will be sent. Now, for those who understand chemistry, the synapse work just like electrolysis. So if you put two wires in an electrolyte, a current will flow through the liquid, 
to the other electrode so the same thing is happening here so you can consider the presynaptic cell and the postsynaptic cells to be electrodes and the neurotransmitter to be electrolyte so it works just like electrolysis all right so hope this helps with you understanding the nervous system and at the end of the lesson please continue watching simply by subscribing see you in the next lesson